I have given you all authority to take out the enemy. You are to conquer and subdue him. Satan has no reign and no rule and no authority within people's lives. God, you search my heart and thoughts. Make sure that I am lined up in your word, Lord. Nothing can come in and hinder what God wants to do. We're right, we're armed, we're dangerous, we're ready to go in. We have keys to bring massive amounts of people into the kingdom of God. Um, today I want to talk to you about toxic appetite and I also want to talk about the seer, the prophet, the knower of our times, but really about the seer. But I want to open this up because it's so critical. September 11th of last year I was flying from Washington State to go into Holland for one day and then to fly into Sweden. And I knew it was a prophetic timeline. Pam, I had just finished doing my DVD with you five for five which has to do with the Garden of Eden and the five senses that we have, but also the other five, which are out of our emotions. When you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, and sick, at times we'll operate out of them. So I was on the plane going, Phew. God, I'm so glad that DVD is done. Do I have to make any more? And here we are making two right now. But anyway, so I'm flying over there, and I was thinking about Lucifer and everything that had happened, how he had lost his position, and I heard the Holy Spirit speak, toxic appetite. So as I started to fly, not even maybe 10, 15 minutes in the air, all the way across America, I have never... Now, you have to understand, I have been traveling full-time for... Oh my gosh, 29, almost 30 years. I'm talking full time, 20 to 30 trips a year, if not more. And so I've never had turbulence like this. And I really prayed and said, God, if you could just send in the big guns, everything's going to move. And I'm going to write down, I'm going to read what I wrote from the Holy Spirit. So I'm praying and God literally sends Gabriel. I've only seen him three other times in my entire life, but he's real. And Gabriel comes and then the turbulence was so bad that this, I don't know, 777 or whatever, it just kept belly flopping. And as we were getting closer, I knew we were getting closer to New York. I knew that I would have to pray like never before. And when I did, I said, that's it, God. I'm calling in Michael right now. And he has a separation up in heaven. He does not stay. Um, like next to all the other angels because he separated out and when I called Michael within a matter of seconds he was there and I've seen him quite a few times in my years past but God really spoke to me and this is what he said he said what did look what did Lucifer do I said God he was a worshiper and um, it, well he was you know he's war so he's a worshiper and he's a warrior and what did he do I said that's what he did I said but his toxic appetite caused him to fall and Lord said what did Gabriel do and I said well Gabriel brought the word of the living God to Mary that she would have a child. And so he brings the word. And he said, and what did Michael do? And I said, well, oh, Michael prayed. And in 21 days, the answer came back. And the Lord says, we need to be paying attention to this because we are dealing right now where we're going to have to start really calling in the big guns. And most of you don't believe in angels. Shame on you. Most people don't even believe in uh, deliverance. I'm dealing with a, a, a huge healing ministry right now that does not believe. He, they believe in healing, but they don't believe in deliverance. And so all I said was, are you saved? Because I don't know. Because the word says that, you know, healing and deliverance are like a glove. They go hand in hand. And so it was just so interesting to have to go through all these dynamics. And I said, Lord, you're up to something with this word, aren't you? And he said, yes, I am. He said, will you tell my people that if they would worship? See, this is what the church is built on. The church is built on worship. The church is built on the word of the living God through the Holy Bible. And it's also through the prayer. So when you're in a church service, you're going to have three mechanisms. You're going to have worship. You're going to have the word of God. And then you're going to have a time of prayer. And you see how God is wanting to maneuver and move in us right now like never before. And I'm telling you because are we the church or are we the church? I'm not talking about a building. We're the church. So we need to be praised up, worded up, and ready to release it. I love and thank you, Pam, and everyone for the beautiful gifts that the 38. Um, but, you know, I stepped in yesterday to 38 years in ministry. At times, I have to be honest, I'm like, 
I don't even know how I made it through the warfare after the divorce and everything that I've been through. And yet God is so merciful and he is a God of new beginnings. You know what I'm saying? And so he was able to move beyond what I could even comprehend. But even right now, um, I have to say this, there is such a toxic appetite within God's people. And um, recently this year, I can't say when, but I had a, a two dear friends that came with me and there was so much insanity going on in this um, ministry that this person was um, saying that Jesus dresses like a clown and rides on a roller coaster all through heaven, which is not true. And um, all you need to do is sit on his lap and come and suck the milk out of his breast, which is also not true. And also the other thing was it had to do with grave soaking, like laying on top of people that have died, laying on their graves. And I said, Lord, we have an epidemic of a toxic appetite. The problem I'm having, honestly, is that people right now are all following this one person. And because they are literally hundreds, if not thousands or ten thousands of people are falling away from God because they believe all this craziness. And there are times where people want to set themselves up. And they want a position. But I believe even right now as I'm saying this, a lot of you, God's given you a mission. But in your mission, he's also given you the position. Some of you do not like the position God's given you. But he is saying, if you will stay where I call you, when it's time to go out, everything is going to fall into place so quickly. It will literally blow your mind. But so many times, everybody wants the whole thing. They don't want to like take the time like people all the time say you remind me of so and so Angela you remind me of so and so and I go no one's ever going to be like me because my DNA there's a print of my 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 thumbs a print of my feet and I recently learned there's a tongue print and so there are three things that separate you but that print you with the DNA you're your own person don't ever let anyone I'm just throwing this in for free don't let anyone ever tell you that you were someone else or that you remind them it's okay to remind someone is someone but you are not that person amen because you know what's going to happen you're going to lose your identity and we have an identity crisis in america and around the world and the identity crisis is this is that people they they literally feel it's the identity crisis it's just an orphan mentality within the kingdom of god people do not understand what the five-fold ministry is and I'm telling you, um, I just wrote a word that went out on um, all the prophetic networks not even two weeks ago. And I really wrote it for Texas because God said, I am thundering across this great nation. God is releasing a wind and a fire from heaven like we don't even understand the fullness of it. And when I got the word, there was no floods or anything like that. But I said to Pam, which will vouch. And I said, Pam, I believe God says the waters are getting ready to rise up, but it has to do with the Holy Spirit. And there are going to be times when we are in drought or our spirits feel like they're in drought. And even though we don't understand God's ways are not our ways, God will use every circumstance for his glory. Amen. He does. What, no matter what it is, did we want the flooding? No. Do we want people to lose their homes? Of course not. But you know what? God said, you'll know when the end times come because it is no different. Lucifer lost his position in heaven. You guys know the story. It's in Isaiah and Ezekiel. He lost his position. And because he did, Isaiah 14, 11 decrees this. And he says, your pompousness has brought you down to hell. And at the sound of your stringed instruments, with Lucifer, he has the strings, percussion, and wind instruments, which I didn't know that. As, you know, I went to Larry, and he goes, I said, Larry, the Lord gave me these three, and he said, there is. And there's something about that in the sound. He said, they're key instruments. It's prophetic, God said, but he was talking to the king of Babylon, which refers to Satan. He said, but in retrospect, he's really wanting us to wake up today. In Ezekiel 28, 11 through 13, he says, And moreover, you need to lament and start to cry and weep out for God and to ask for his perfection. But I'm telling you, as ministers, we need to start asking God for his wisdom, his discerning of spirit. I know some of you don't, won't even know where that's at. That's in 1 Corinthians 12. But God says, 
The prophet speaks the mind under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And God is needing us to get ready because the toxic appetite is so, uh, it's so deceptive, but it's so volatile right now that we don't even understand the fullness of it. When people tell you that there is no such place as hell and that God is a God of love and he'll always be a God of love. Well, you know what? He is a God of love. But all throughout the word, especially in the book of Revelation, there is a separation. Don't you think that there's not? And I believe that the problem is to the seven churches in Revelation, he goes, and woe to you because Ephesus had lost their first love. Many people have lost God as their first love because they're following all these people and all these tangents and those things that really don't matter. Like, I, I'm at a place right now, personally, in my life, where I just don't have time for stupid. I mean, I just don't have the time for the stupidness of people. I want to run with people that are thoroughbreds and that are stallions in the kingdom. God is so sick and tired of show horses, he can't see straight. He's looking for those that are going to run with him. I tell you all the time, we're just donkeys that Jesus rides in on.